Welcome to this Gorilla 15 replay on El Halouf. This match was actually sent to me by Diplomatic JD from Cry2 and he sent it a day before the 9.15 uh, yeah, 1 patch went live. So just in time, otherwise I wouldn't be able to play this replay because Wargaming has a tendency to break the replay system completely between versions even if the changes are... Uh, purely aesthetic or minor so yeah um, luckily he sent it to me the day before and I've I haven't actually featured the Greta 15 on this channel yet um, one of the reasons being that I haven't uh, been playing on the test server when this was going to be first introduced and as well that I'm still up all to the Borseek on the live server on my account so um, I still have uh, quite a long way to go. I wasn't really interested in the Waffle E100. It was completely broken and overpowered, but also very situational. So, um, and not really a Clan Wars vehicle. So, like I said before, it, it, having vehicles just to play randoms um, at the moment is a bit obsolete to me because I, I'm play mainly competitive modes. Uh, if I get the chance to play, I play very little randoms. Uh, lately, I've been I've been getting the gun marks on the Panzer 54, but that's that's about as far as my random experience goes. Um, some T T50 matches, but that's it really. But diplomatic uh, set up a nice ambush for this T10, who walks straight into it and loses quite a lot of HP. I can't say exactly how much because um, as you can see I'm running vanilla still and I'm planning on keeping to do so so I've still got no hit log until um, Wargaming finally gets their asses around to implementing one uh, so in the meantime it will just have to be visible if diplomatic shoots so T5051 is not really interested in coming up um, this TD does look really nice though, it's got some really nice speed and quite an epic gun. It also has 10 degrees of gun depression, over the front at least. But the turret isn't fully traversable, it's something like 40 degrees to the left and the right or something. So you have to take that in account when going around corners, so you can't... But I mean it would be ideal with the rear mounted turret that... Um, to turn your turret 90 degrees to the side and then reverse out around the corner so you expose less of your tank for enemies to shoot at but I guess that would make this vehicle a little bit overpowered it, it's already sort of borderline uh, dubious at the moment in terms of uh, how well it performs uh, or at least how high the skill gap is if you've got a good player because I mean, this gun is really nice, it's got really good aim time in comparison and uh, nice alpha, good penetration, so you can do a lot of damage in a relatively short time with this gun. The only disadvantage is the platform itself, which obviously is limited to 40 degrees left and right, um, and also has pretty much no armor, like the, the Waffle E100 uh, on the turret, but this thing has got no armor anywhere. But an advantage for that is that it's a lot faster because of that. And uh, having no armor, he takes one shot from the KV-4 for 300 damage, but the M103 shot only tracks him for some reason, so yeah. Um, as you can see, uh, Diplomatic has got a camo net mounted on this TD. That's one other sort of disadvantage, is that this tank has no camo. And with enemies like that Ferdinand that miss um, this... Waffle E100 completely, or oh, Waffle E100, um, completely at point blank range. You don't really need any camo or armor because you're pretty safe in that respect as well. And as you can see, RT is fair and balanced. Two quick kills in rapid succession, and now um, it's time to move up. So they were with like five or six tanks on this flank, and now it's only four. So yeah, working as intended. Diplomatic is trying to see if he can get a shot into this AMAX 120, but he's not having any of it and pulling back. So Diplomatic moves up further. And now this AMAX 120 decides to come forward, probably reloaded. Diplomatic puts a really nice shot into him. And the AMAX 120 falls down, takes hardly any damage at all. 
But again, balanced RT 985 damage in one shot because apparently a thousand damage shots are what this game needs in tier 10. And let's keep on going. So now the enemy team is, well, pretty decimated. There's an RT still behind that bush. Did he pull back? And no, of course he didn't because. Even though RT has tracks, RT players tend to not use those tracks at all. If they can help it, they rather camp at one spot the whole match and then die. Um, he has a casual glance on that one to one to the right, but he will die before he can aim, so might as well keep driving. Might get the WZ or the RT still. And as you can still see, this tank has quite a lot of forward speed, which is really nice, and the gun looks really cool on this thing as well. I mean the model itself is, is pretty damn good looking though. Um, turret is a bit weird. But I mean there's only one RT left and there's a very little places he could be and he's over there so let's snapshot him and win the match. So that is a relatively quick ace tanker match for a tier 10 TD, the Griller 15. And Diplomatic and actually managed to do 6.1k damage this match as well as got 1118 base XP. He also did 1544 assistance damage due to tracking and various other things. Um, so all in all quite a solid match and um, a nice showcase of this TD when you move up in the cover of your allies and actually get to use this gun be a mother of a gun so yeah i really like this replay hope you did as well feel free to rate it subscribe to the channel and see you guys next time